Shalom, holy brothers and sisters. I created this PowerPoint presentation in honor of my engagement party, which just recently happened on Rosh Chodesh Elul, which corresponded with the solar eclipse of the moon. And so this first slide here, it says, Matza Isha Matza Tov, Vayafek Ratzon Mehashem. And it means, he who finds a wife finds a great good and obtains favor of the Lord. This saying comes from Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, Mishlei. These are the holy words of King Solomon, and it comes from the Song of Songs, also known in Hebrew as Shira Shirim, which is a segula or a good omen for zivug, which means to find your soulmate. So anyone who's single and searching can read the Song of Songs, and it's a good omen for getting married. Our sages teach us that when you share in someone's joy, you multiply their joy. And likewise, when you share in their sorrow, you decrease their sorrow. So it is a great deed to rejoice with other people because you make them even happier. So Rabbi Shalom Arush says that when you say a joke, it opens up people's minds and hearts. Rather, the laughter itself is what opens the mind and opens the heart. So when the mind is open and the heart is open, then the information that's shared afterwards are able to better penetrate. So this slide shows that even the king of the jungle can get beaten up by his wife. It says, wife is wife, it doesn't matter who you are. So I like to think of a person's spouse as the personal trainer for their soul. Just like a, a, a personal trainer for physical fitness makes you sweat, increases your pulse and respiration rate, sometimes makes you want to curse, sometimes makes you want to cry, can also make you hate them at certain moments, but ultimately the personal trainer helps you to obtain your goals much more effectively than you could have done on your own. So in the solar eclipse event that recently happened, the moon passed before the sun for almost three hours. And according to Kabbalah, the moon, which waxes and wanes just like a woman's monthly cycle, it represents the woman and the sun represents the man. And in the messianic era, which we are now entering into, it says that scripture says that a woman's stature will be greater than man's. So for a moment on the afternoon of the eclipse, there was a messianic potential felt in the world which only happens once every 8 to 30 years. Now Rosh Chodesh, the new month, it symbolizes new energy and it represents renewal. It's the first holiday after Shabbat, the Sabbath, that's mentioned in the Bible. What it means is that we always have the ability to recreate ourselves at any moment. And the next slide, we can see that... The words Dodi and Yadid are very closely related. Dodi means beloved and Yadid means friend. And they have almost the same exact letters, except for in Yadid you have a Yud, and in Dodi, beloved, you have a Vav. So basically, a beloved is like somebody's best friend. The month Elul is an acronym and it stands for Ani le Dodi ve Dodi li. I am my beloved's and my beloved is mine. We can also think of it as being I am for my friend and my friend is for me. The spouse being a person's best friend ultimately and in the best and ideal situation. And the relationship between husband and wife is a metaphor between, for the relationship between God and the Jewish people. We have the concept of teshuvah this month, which means returning, which represents the fact that our relationship with God and with each other waxes and wanes. So when we go astray, when we feel distant and separated from our beloved, we have the possibility of doing teshuvah, returning, coming back. In the case of the relationship between man and God, it's a state of repentance. The letters of tshuva are also the same letters of Shabbat, so we have the idea of selichot, which is for forgiveness, and forgiveness helps us to make up. Now the Aleph represents God. There's many um, of God's names which start with Aleph. Um, Adonai, Elokeinu, Elohim, 
And the letter itself, Aleph, is composed of two yuds and a vav. The yud in gematria or numerology represents the number 10. The vav represents the number 6. So we have two yuds, 20, and the number 6, 26. Now, the holy name of God that we don't pronounce, the tetragrammaton, also is numerologically equivalent to the number 26. The yud is 10, the he is 5, the vav is 6, and then the last he is another 5, which adds up to 26. So 26 and 26, we see that Aleph is related to the name of God, which corresponds with the, um, uh, the aspect of transcendence. Now, the Lamed, which is the tallest letter in the Aleph Bet, it represents reaching one's maximum potential. And we have a Vav, and a Vav connects two things. Like we have the Vav in the Aleph, which connects heaven and earth. It connects man and God. So Vav is the master connector. And in the word Elul, we have a Lamed connected with another Lamed. And what Rabbi Abu Lafia teaches is that a Lamed and another Lamed is two Lamids. Two Lamids is written as Lamed Bet. Bet means two. And the word Lamed Bet, Lev, means heart. So we can see that when you take two Lamids and you put them face to face, you, you actually get a heart. Mistakes lead to separation, God forbid, and the way that we rectify mistakes and become close again is by saying, I'm sorry, Salichot. This is a return to wholeness. Now the concept of back to back and front to front is a theme which we have seen from the beginning of time. The first human being was created back to back, male and female, God created them in Genesis. So the reason why it was created as one singular person in the beginning and then separation was necessary in order to facilitate the possibility of having the sensation of returning to wholeness is so that when the husband and wife are together in in procreation they could feel wholeness again it's a return to wholeness so the male and the female together represents a form of completion or a return to the original unity which was present at creation now, this theme is uh, repeating itself again in the Ark of the Covenant. Here we see two tablets which were inside the Ark of the Covenant, which contained the Ten Commandments. And on top are the cherubim, the angels. The cherubim were one male and one female. This Ark of the Covenant was located in the Holy of Holies, and the Holy of Holies represents procreation. It was inside the temple in Jerusalem. And when the Israelites were at peace, the cherubim were face to face in an intimate embrace. And when there was disharmony with the people, these angels, these cherubim were actually facing back to back. So once again, we see the concept of front to front and back to back repeating itself in the Bible. So when there's no peace in the home god forbid when couples are fighting the divine presence leaves them but when we are in harmony when we are face to face and heart to heart and we have shalom bayit peace in the home we merit to have the divine presence the shechina dwelling with us which is represented by the aleph so going back to the word elul we have the lamid and the lamid the two parts of the heart when they are face to face and the two people are heart to heart, we have the Aleph present, the, the divine essence. Now the next slide has uh, to do with the letter of the month. Every month has a different Hebrew letter associated with it. And the month of Elul is associated with the letter Yud. Yud, when it's spelled out, is spelled Yud Vav Dalid. The yud represents the nikuda, which is an unstable dot because it has no legs to stand on. It's just floating in the air. The vav represents the sphira, which is a divine attribute. There are 10 spherot in the Kabbalistic tree of life. And the dalid, which is a very lofty Kabbalistic um, 
concept, it represents the partuf, which is a stable divine configuration. I put the triangle as a representation of three things that start with Yud, that in my mind are the essence of the letter Yud, the top of the triangle corresponding with the tetragrammaton, which in Hebrew starts with the letter Yud, Yud K and Vav K. And then the bottom, the two legs of the triangle represent Yisrael, the land of Israel, and the Yehudim, the Jewish people. Now a triangle which faces upwards like this one represents fire, whereas the triangle in, that's facing downwards in the Magen David, the Star of David, represents water. Water flows down and fire is the only element that exists in the world which defies gravity, defies nature. So this trio or, or trifecta or triad is so powerful that it could defy nature, it can go against um, the, the natural forces in the world. It can transcend even the laws of nature which were obviously created by God himself. Um, the letter Yud is contained in every single letter of the Aleph Bet. If we go back to the first slide with the month of Elul, we see that Aleph contains two Yuds. Lamed contains a Yud on the top. The Vav also starts off on the top with a Yud. And again, the Lamed at the end has a Yud in it. So likewise, just like there is a Yud in every single letter in the Aleph Bet, there is also a spark of the divine in every single human being. In Hebrew, the word neshama, which means soul, is connected to the word nishima, which means breath. It's basically the same word with different punctuation. It says in Genesis that God breathed a breath of life into Adam's nostrils. So we know that the breath is the animating force of the body, and that's our connection with the Creator. Without breath, without God, we cannot live. So therefore, just like the Yud in every letter of the Aleph Bet, we should strive to see the, the divine essence and the good points in every single person. There is a theme of unity this month. And also there's many, many things that come in groups of 10. It says that the 10th shall be holy unto the Lord. There were 10 utterances or 10 speakings that God spoke in the creation of the world. For example, let there be light, um, and then there was light. And then there were 10 commandments, and obviously we have 10 fingers and 10 toes. There are 10 spherot in the Kabbalistic tree of life, and 10 people create a quorum for prayer or a minyan. Now every month also has a different color which is associated with it. The color associated with the month of Elul is the color red. Red represents passion, increased circulation, increased respiratory rate, warmth, energy, joy, sensitivity, heightened awareness, and optimism amongst other things. There is a tribe which is associated with every month and the month of Elul corresponds with the tribe of Gad, G-A-D. God was known as being great warriors, and the tent on their symbol represents military encampment. This is the tribe that stayed behind in Jordan in order to protect the body of Moses. They stayed by his grave site, while all the other um, 11 tribes entered the land of Israel. So this tribe represents tremendous loyalty. And as a side note, in this week's Parsha, this week's Bible portion, Shoftim, Judges, Moses is instructed to create a court system with judges and police because he's about to pass away and the Israelites are going to need to have an entire system to take the place of him, his brother, and his sister. His brother Aaron, who was the peacemaker, he was the mediator and arbitrator between couples and also whenever people had disputes, he was the one who made peace between them, and Miriam was the leader of the women. So since his brother and sister had already passed away, and he's about to pass away, now the people have no leaders. So they had to have a system of courts and judges and police in order to prevent chaos from happening. 
the, the tent, the symbol of the tent also reminds me a few weeks ago in the Bible portion, the story about Balak and Bilam. Um, Balak sent Bilam to curse the Jewish people, the Israelites, and instead of a curse, what came out of Bilam's mouth was Matavu o Alecha Yis- Yaakov, Mishkanotecha Yisrael. How great are your tents, Jacob, your dwelling places, Israel. And the reason why he praised the Israelites for their encampments is because they had this unique um, feature which none of the doors to the tents faced each other. And what this means is that re- they respected each other's privacy and modesty. So nobody could look into the other person's tent. Likewise, the zodiac sign which is associated with the month of Elul is Virgo, which is the virgin, which also is a symbol of purity and modesty. And the prophet Elijah also comes from the tribe of God. Now I'm going to take a quick detour into this week's Parsha, which is Shoftim. And just to share one, one very beautiful um, concept with you, I think that if we boiled down this, the essence of this week's Bible portion into one sentence, it would be this. Tzedek, tzedek, tirdof. Justice, justice, you shall pursue or chase. So most of us are not judges or lawyers, so how can we pursue justice? Well, we can help those in need, such as children and the elderly and even animals who can't fight for their own rights. We can be their voice. We can be the head of movements that fight for equal rights for all people, people of minorities, people who have um, been oppressed. Um, Since we were slaves in the lands of Egypt, it is therefore our duty and obligation to assist others who are in the situation that we were once in. Now, we know that the Torah, the Bible, does not repeat itself. There's no, um, there's no one word that's superfluous. There's nothing extra. Everything is precise and exacted. So why does it say tzedek tzedek tildof? Why can't we just say pursue justice? Why does it have to say justice, justice you shall pursue? Well, whenever there's a repetition, it's to add emphasis, and there's additional reasons why it's repeated. Another reason is to be just in your justice. So a court and a judge should not be too harsh or too lenient. They need to be fair. And also the first tzedek, the first justice, is directed to the judges who judge in accordance with the five books of Moses, the Old Testament, or the Torah. And there is a second justice, which denotes compromise, which is used in emergency decrees that are occasionally done by prophets or kings in order for the world to exist. So even Aaron occasionally bent the truth for the sake of making peace between people. So we need to know when to be flexible in in our ruling and in our just ways. Now if we change the vowels in tzedek tzedek, we get tzedakah tzedakah tildof. Pursue ways to be a charitable person. Tzedakah means charity. And we know that the greater the effort and the greater the sacrifice, the greater the reward. So for example, a person who has a million dollars in the bank and he gives $10,000 for charity, it's no sweat off his back. He doesn't even notice it. Whereas a person who has $100 in the bank and he gives $10 to charity, of course, it's a much bigger sacrifice. So he's done a much better or much greater good deed than the other person. Now, I believe that time is the most valuable commodity that most of us have. So donating our time to worthy causes, to helping other people, to volunteering, to making the world a better place, this is the ultimate charity that most of us can give, especially if we're not in a position to donate lots of money. The bottom line is that we should give whatever is in our power to give. Now, if you change the vowels again, you get tzadik tzadik tildof, which means... Uh, a righteous person you should follow or you should chase. So finding a mentor, a friend, or a role model and emulating his or her ways, when we keep good company and good influences, it has an effect on us because you become like the people that you hang around. We need to pursue wisdom as if our lives depended on it because it does, but we also need to keep in mind that deeds are much more important than knowledge Because at the end of the day, it's not how much you know, it's what you do that is what we are going to be judged on. 
So in summary, justice, charity, and righteousness are all very closely related, and we should strive to help others in any way that we possibly can. Now the month Elul means to search, but what are we searching for? I recently learned by Rabbi Katz on SoundCloud that Elul is the second B'dikat Chametz. So in, in the month of Nisan, which is the first month of the Jewish year, we have the holiday of Passover, and we don't eat bread, we only eat matzah, unleavened bread. So we have to look for breadcrumbs throughout the house. And what the breadcrumbs represent are aspects in ourselves that we need to cleanse spiritually from ourselves. So in the month of Elul, which is the sixth month of the Jewish year, we do another B'dikat Chametz, but this one is not a physical one. It's a we take spiritual inventory and we find things that need fixing in ourselves, just like during Passover, the yeast in the bread represents the inflated ego. Likewise, in the month of Elul, we also search for our inflated ego in arrogance, and we try our best to make changes in our lives so that we can be a better person. So Elul is a month of introspection, of reflection, of self-analysis, of thinking about how we can be a better person, and if we don't know where to start, we can look at the 13 attributes of God and try to emulate them. Compassion, being slow to anger, being forgiving, being kind and merciful and truthful. Other important qualities to work on are increasing patience, increasing our charity, being joyful, and also things like not being jealous of our neighbor. In Elul, we blow the shofar, and the shofar is a symbol that wakes us up out of our comfort zones. If a person is comfortable, it means that they're not growing. Now, the kala, which is the bride, has a power to bless. So I would like to bless everyone with a sweet new year. May you be written and sealed in the book of life, health, and prosperity. May you reach your maximum potential in all areas of life. May you be happy and fulfilled and peaceful and satisfied. May you fulfill your mission to the best of your ability. May you have nachat, pride, from your children and shalom bayit, peace in the home. And may the Messiah come speedily in our days to end all suffering and chaos in the world and usher in an, an era of redemption and eternal peace. Lady die, die, oh, 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 o